The East African region has suddenly become the hotspot for oil, oil and gas activity and Kenya's offshore play has become increasingly attractive for explorers. We recognize that uh, there's been a lot of uh, commercial discoveries in East Africa, with the late on, latest one of course being in Kenya. And we need to have a structured approach on how to move the oil and gas industry forward with regard to the kind of capacities that require to be put in place in the next five or so years. In keeping pace with this development, the Ministry of Energy is planning to review the Exploration and Petroleum Act, which came into effect in 1986, but which has never been modernized. The document we have, based on the standards of those years, was in line with best international practice then. But see, since then, a lot of things have taken place. A lot of things have taken place. The technology for our exploration and exploitation has also developed tremendously. And therefore, using that law, would uh, continued uh, application of that law would not be in the interest of the country. So what we have done is to request the World Bank to give us some technical assistance. First and foremost, to prepare gas exploitation terms. Licenses for oil and gas blocks in Kenya have drastically increased in value in the past nine months after British explorer Talo Oil announced it discovered the first oil in the country in March. What that means that, um, then is that you begin to attract the bigger oil and gas uh, exploration companies and we've already seen an interest from big companies like uh, Total, who are both in Kenya Uganda, and, in Kenya and Uganda. We've also seen uh, Statoil, I mean there are many exploration companies. So what's happening is that the activities are becoming successful and by so doing, we are gaining a lot of attention and by so doing, we are attracting these investors. So what requires to be done is for us to ensure that these forums do not lose the opportunity to ensure that then uh, we can share experiences and best practices that will uh, facilitate the development of uh, infrastructure and related um, you know, capacities that will sustain that interest and ensure that we remain competitive. National Oil Corporation of Kenya has already signed a deal with Japan's national oil company for the partnership of the ongoing exploration for oil and gas block in 14T, which is in Magadi. Block 14T is a block um, which we as National Oil are very excited about and the reason for that is that it gives us as Kenyans the opportunity to be directly involved in all aspects of oil exploration within the country. We are operating the block. Uh, we have carried out various studies and surveys so far. We have done our gravity studies. We have done our geochemical studies. We are currently flying uh, FTG. Uh, full tensor gradiometry, which is an aeroplane that actually flies up and down the block acquiring some data. And uh, once we finalize that, we will then start preparations for our seismic campaign. Petroleum accounts for about 25% of Kenya's national import bill, creating the need to cushion customers against fluctuating international crude prices. Already, state-run National Oil Corporation of Kenya says it will build a $500 million oil jetty in the port city of Mombasa. It's a very uh, feasible and viable project, particularly to help us deal with uh, challenges such as demerage. The country has been paying an enormous amount of money um, by way of demerage. In addition to that, we need to set up strategic petroleum reserves. Uh, the mandate that National Oil has been given is to set up 90 days worth of reserves. So to do that, to serve the region, and when we now add to that equation the fact that significant oil deposits have been found within the region, which will also need to be exported, then you see that the existing infrastructure will not be enough to serve neither the import nor the export, and this is what the, the floating jetties that we want to build will do. Many African oil producers have fallen prey to the oil costs, with the economies becoming totally dependent upon the black gold. We need to ensure that uh, we do not then um, find ourselves 
in the situation where our Western country uh, counterparts have found themselves in. That is why it's good that we've actually had this forum because we've had them sharing about the mistakes they've made. So what we're going to do now is ensure that we don't make the same mistakes and we can circumvent them by taking the lessons that they learned and also using these five years to ensure that we put the right capacities in place and to ensure that we don't wait um, 50 years to make mistakes and then come back and try and write them. Oil, like any other natural resource in and of itself, is really neither a blessing nor a curse. It is the institutions that you put in place to manage that oil that will determine whether it will be a blessing or a curse. And so because we are very alive to that as a country, we are determined to put in place the structures that will make any such resources found within the country to be for the benefit of the Kenyan people and not uh, to affect them in an adverse manner. As the region continues to become increasingly attractive for explorers, expectations are high among East Kenyans that they will soon join the ranks of all producing countries in the world. Reporting for Ion Kenya, I am Laban Cliff, Ontario.